Shalom everyone, and this is Yalak Emmet, returning with the final part of the topic Halloween observance. This is part four. We've done part one to three so far, and uh, we just want to do a little bit of a, a recap or a summary of what was in the last lesson as well as what was in Lesson 1 and 2. So basically, we talked about the very idea of Halloween, where it came from, that uh, it's really about people that were looking to protect their their livestock, their crops, and their farm animals. And instead of turning to the Most High for that protection, for their sustenance and so on, they were looking for it to be done in other ways, by the worship of uh, spirits, which the Most High has commanded us not to do. We looked at the costumes that are used in Halloween, the pumpkin lanterns that were basically indicative of the heads of people that the ancient Celtics would kill and even ride around with those heads dripping with blood from their horses. And they would basically get into head worship, keeping their heads in their window sills or in their houses or outside their houses, because they felt that the the soul was in the head and the power that they got from that person came out of their soul that was in their head. And um, that head later... Um, you know, became the modern pumpkin that we use. Um, you know, that they use, I should say, because I certainly don't observe Halloween and never did observe Halloween. But they were into this head worship and they also made cakes and made food in order to please the, the spirits and uh, any offended person that was dead whose head they took because they killed them in the human sacrifices they would do at this time it was for their protection to make the food to offer to them they would also eat the food as well you've got the the customs of dressing up like skeletons or dead people and so on all a part of the ritual and the the human sacrifice that was going on. We also mentioned how the scriptures teach that people who don't have understanding of the the Father's law or His commandments will remain in the congregation of the dead. So we're seeing right there that this is nothing that the people who do worship the Father in heaven really wants to be involved with. All right, and um, so we're going to take a look now at at uh, part four and so we're going to talk about uh this quickly stonehenge we all know those very large tall heavy stones that have seemed so mysterious for a long time i've always thought all along from as a child that hey somebody must know <laughs> where these stones come from apparently um you know it does have something to do with uh the druids from way back then um, so we're going to just touch on this briefly. Now, we mentioned as well that the the Romans were, you know, were at war with the Celtic people. They had hit Rome and Rome built up their army. And uh, eventually that kind of uh, sparked off the Roman Empire because once they had a very strong army, now they're really a force to be, you know, reckoned with, as they say. While the Romans, who defeated the Celtic people, ended some of the Celtic religious practices, they incorporated enough of their pagan rituals and beliefs into their empire, the Roman Empire, that is. The Druidic priesthood did not actually come to an end. Every year at what's known as Midsummer Day, hundreds of Druids greet the dawn, which is a holy day observance for them, at Stonehenge in southeast England. All right, They hold that this ritual has ancient roots. And so you see here that the, Druid, um, the, the Druidic priesthood is really not over. What we have to keep in mind as well is that when you read a lot of history books, some of these things, uh, as well as, you know, books that deal with mythology and so on, we think, oh, Adonis and, uh, um, 
whatever other gods uh, that have been known, like Zeus and so on, we feel that these are just a thing of the past and they're just pretty little statues to look at or at least historical statues um, that are marking a time in history when people believed a certain thing as well. Hey, wake up. People still believe these things. That's the reason why they keep them in museums, why people pay money for them to, to make a statue looking like them, like these gods and so on. That's the reason why they're still around here and treated with such veneration, because people still believe these things. It is just that, uh, by the way that um, society has changed, you know, and by the modernization of things, and when you get computers and so on, and just the whatever they call the space age and all that kind of stuff, people tend to kind of shift in their belief system. Not in the sense that they they, they do not believe these things, but in the sense that they practice their belief of them in a different kind of way or a modern kind of way. Oh, one other thing to show about that too, to show that that really is the case is you got a lot of people who might not actually profess, openly profess and go outside and, uh, you know, dress and show throughout the year their belief in some of these gods of ancient times that people made with their own hands you know, whether of wood or stone or something like that. But once a year or twice a year, such as at Halloween or other times, they'll dress up in garments that reflect those beliefs that they have all year long. Just because you only express it at certain times of the year don't mean you don't have that belief in you walking around all of the year. But then you got other people who are deeper into those cults, deeper into those um, pagan um, uh, religions that basically do this all the time, every day, every day, every day. And some meet at night, at, at very, very dark hours of night. And they have their seances, they have their practices, they have their rituals that they do and so on, right? And then they show up and work tomorrow in whatever job that they have. That And you just think, uh, they, you just think they're just like you if you don't get into that kind of stuff. He doesn't go just uh, my coworker, and you would never guess in some cases that they're into this kind of extra religious kind of stuff, uh, right? So uh, you can also have uh, someone who probably won't go into the dressing up and the decorating their house in a certain kind of way that shows all this ancient pagan worship, but they've got them bookmarked all over their computers. They've got all kinds of books and so on about this stuff in their homes, not for the purpose of researching and studying in order to um, try to find out what was there to, to, to show people that this thing is wrong, but they're into it because they love it. And they collect all this stuff. You know, you got some people who will collect even, you know, 200 items of maybe a frog, um, 100 um, dolphins in their house or some other kind of animal. Like they're obsessed with a certain kind of, of pet or animal or something. Like that. And they got these pictures all over or these little figures all over. And, and in some cases, it just looks a little bit creepy. In some, in some cases. I mean, really, yeah, you might like, um, a certain kind of pet or animal or something like that. But when you got all like 500 of them, like, where do you really draw the line? It, it just seems like there's something going on there, right? And so sometimes we don't understand how we go overboard, right? There's some kind of a compulsion there and so on. But what it's really showing is that these things don't really die. These things don't really die. Like I mentioned, the Druidic priesthood, um, you know, is still in effect, never really went away. But in this modern kind of time, it operates differently behind the scenes. But they do come out, like I said, once per year at this Stonehenge in southeast England. And they hold um, a ritual regarding this thing that they see as ancient roots. And many believe that the Stonehenge was actually used by the Druids in, in yesteryear a long time ago in their rituals and their worship of fallen spirits, fallen angels. Right? Midsummer Day is also known as St. John's Day, the Summer Solstice, Adania, and St. John's Feast Day. 
All right. So you see, like I mentioned in the last lesson, these days change their their practices, but also their names over time. Sometimes they switch the name for a, a different name to hide what it is. Sometimes they just add on a name and it goes by a second or a third name. And and sometimes you know even by a fourth and fifth name all at the same time. But they do change the name, and and as I mentioned, it is Midsummer Day is also known as Adonia, right? So watch that word Adonia. I'm gonna do um, a, a teaching on that Adonia as well, and uh, that's gonna be quite interesting. Looking at uh, again more pagan stuff that's built into our societies, into our practices, and even what the Bible says uh, about that too, right? Um, because there, there's stuff even in Christianity that's hiding what Adonia is, and it leads to the worship, old Babylonian worship, right, of uh, of Satan. So again, what we're seeing here is, as I mentioned from the start in, in lesson one of this four-part series on Halloween observance, is that the Christian church is heavily into, into, uh, you know, you know, the false worship and, uh, satanic worship and so on. And don't even know it because their, their stuff is just, their religion is just so plagued with a lot of stuff. Just right before I did this lesson, I was just researching some other stuff. And, uh, one author was saying that, um, the, the Muslims and the Jewish religion, um, of Judaism, they, they label or they categorize Christianity as a pagan religion. And, you know, it went on to say why. But if you tell a Christian they're pagan or they're in a pagan religion, not, you're not cursing them or putting them down. You're just, you're just showing them, teaching them, exposing some stuff, right? Right away. Oh, I'm not a pagan. They, the average Christian doesn't even understand what being pagan means. Don't even understand. They just feel because they call in, in Jesus, whose name really isn't in the Bible, except that they put that in English there. And prior to him being called Jesus, you know, and spelling J-E-S-U-S, it was I-E-S-U-S, right? And then after time when the J was invented, then they switched to J. Um, so it's like whenever certain things happen in the world, somebody can come and change the name of your God, that you call on, the same with, with Yehovah and then Jehovah. Somebody can come and change the name of your God when whatever happens in the world. And that's totally fine with Christians. Keep changing his name. Keep changing his name. And it's no big deal. So, I mean, what's going to happen 50, in 50 years? Is your God going to be called something else other than Jehovah, where he used to call, be called Yehovah? Um, you know, and, and with the Jesus, it, 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 just like they changed his name and switched it and put in a J and now call him Jesus, what are they going to call him in 50 or 100 years if we're still around? What are they going to call him Jerry because something else has changed along the way? Christians don't have enough of a regard for, for the sanctity of the scriptures, for the, for the, for, for the truth of the scriptures and for how it should really um, remain consistent and stay as it as it was, right? The Most High says, "Don't change anything." He says, "Hey, you know, Christ says, I'm, I'm the the first and the last." The Bible says, "You know, don't change anything, and I'm just the way I am." Malachi three and uh, might be verse six. Um, check it out and see if that's that's where it's at. But the Most High says, um, "He changes not. He doesn't change." Deuteronomy four verse two. You know, don't change anything I've commanded. To you. Yet still, someone can change the name of your God whenever they feel fit and print a new Bible and give it to you, and that's fine. You just call that new name because you're a Christian. The pagans change their gods and their gods' names and their holidays' names, their holy days' names, as often as they saw fit. Christianity is just as pagan as that. And this Halloween that we're looking at, again, as I mentioned in lesson one, it's not listed in Leviticus chapter 23. The Most High gave his holy days to Israel. And, uh, why, why is the Christian church who says that they are spiritual Israel, you know, not caring about this? They're having this Halloween and their pastors promoted and supported and so on. You know, when I used to be in the Christian church, I remember I was at the church at one time. And when it was this the Halloween Sunday, um, it's like the church was almost empty. Why? They're out trick and treating. All right. So let's look at some of the religions that take part in in. Uh, Halloween, which, as I mentioned earlier in one of the other um, lessons, that it was once called or initially called uh, Sawin, 
right? That's how I pronounce it. Hopefully it's correct. Uh, I think it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Um, but apparently it's something like Sawin. And then after a while they changed the name to Halloween. But it's the same holiday. Again, switching and changing the names just to trick people, make it more current so that people don't know this is the same old garbage that's still being pushed down our throats. By the people who control the religions of the earth, who don't care about the Torah, who don't care about the instructions from the Father. All right, the type of holy day or holiday um, that that it's known as, um, in, in uh, talking about uh, Halloween and and then this Midsummer Day that I just mentioned, is known. It includes being a cultural um, day, a holiday, a pagan holiday, a Christian holy day, among others. You know, so it's got other names or titles that it falls under. And Halloween or the ancient Sawin is also, what? A Wiccan holiday. So you're dealing with witches now. Right? See Wikipedia for this information about uh, Wicca celebrating um, this holy day of, uh, of Halloween as one of their holidays. Midsummer Day marks the ancient middle of summer so they got belton which was the start of summer they got halloween which was the end of it and then they got this uh, midsummer which is the middle of summer and uh, it's observed anywhere from uh, june 20th to 25th right somewhere around there the midsummer holiday links back to sun worship and has to do with measuring when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky uh, people even made drawings or pictures of the sun, all right? And uh, keep in mind that sun worship is coming way back. This is an old Babylonian thing, right? So this has nothing to do with the Father in heaven. And even if you look in your TVs now and, and sometimes in flyers, brochures or whatever, and movies and even cartoons, you'll see the pictures of the sun is just getting, um, it's been so prominent and you just did not realize it all along, right? The people who control the mind um, control box that we have in our houses that we plug into the wall outlet to be entertained by, they've put the sun worship there, right? Um, in all these movies, check out the sun again and you see how prominent it is, even in advertisements, all right, commercials. All right, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 19, let's see what that one says. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Most High, thy power, hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Alright, so he's talking here about uh, all the, the stars and all the host of heaven, you know, everything that's there in the heavens and the angels and so on. Um, he's saying, don't lift up your eyes unto these things, right? Uh, and look at the sun and the moon and so on. You know, this old sun worship, right, that the midsummer holiday goes back to, is dealing with just uh, again satanic worship that you should not be involved with by any means. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5. So it said, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Hear the commandments here. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Most High, thy power, and I'm jealous. I'm a jealous um, power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right, so he says, don't bow down and serve them, right? And the verse 4 before was talking about don't make in the grave an image and so on to bow down to them. Um, that's in heaven above, right? So don't make anything looking like a sun and so on. All these people dealing with the midsummer day and dealing with the worship of the sun and so on, they're just finding something as to worship. Let's worship anything else but the Creator Himself. But the Most High says He will visit the iniquity of all these things up on the people who do this. In the 9th century AD, the Roman Catholic Church merged All Saints Day, or also called All Souls Day, which is about prayers for the dead, how creepy, to combine it with the Feast of Sawin, or Halloween. So All Saints, or All Souls Day, was combined 
um, with the feast of Sawin or with the feast of Halloween. Do people know this? Are they aware of this? You know, some of these things I didn't even know before I started researching these things. But as I said at the end of the last lesson, you've got to get into an aggressive kind of research and consideration of scriptures. Right? In order to find out the truth because you will be led astray by everyone out there who is propagating and pushing false doctrines. These things I share with you, go check them out, learn them for yourself and read the scriptures, right? And look up other scriptures to go along with it as well, above and beyond the scriptures that I've mentioned here, so that you can learn for yourself and so that you can save yourself from this untoward generation. All right. So, so Halloween was combined with All Souls Day, which really is about making prayers for the dead. All right. These people seem to be obsessed with the dead. And what did I say in the previous lessons is that they were a warring people and they loved to kill people and deal, dealt with human sacrifice, cutting off heads and riding around with them on their horses, putting heads in their windowsills and outside their houses and so on. Hence the modern day pumpkin at Halloween that's carved out to look like a head with eyes, nose and so on. All right. These people were, were into some real creepy, scary, satanic kind of stuff. And this is what Halloween was combined with. So when people are marching around, uh, you know, saying that they know God, they worship God, they serve God, but they're into all this stuff. Look, the God you serve is Satan. The God you are worshiping when you do this stuff is Satan. A small round cake was also made for this feast of Halloween and All Souls Day as well as um, for the dead, meaning that they made it to eat, but also made it for the dead. All right? The cakes were referred to as actual souls. So remember, the pumpkin it, it represents something. It represents the heads of people that they killed and did the human sacrifices with and so on. Um, the cakes here also refer to our souls. We know that cakes were sometimes used in these religious um, rituals for these kinds of reasons, right? The, the goddess uh, um, uh, Ashtara, Asherath, which uh, I believe is the, the queen mother of heaven, they even made uh, cakes uh, looking like her, shaped like her. Right, and and this was a part of their religious ritual when worshiping the Queen Mother of Heaven, and they would offer these cakes up to her in their worship. But they would also eat the cake that was shaped like her, and they put the figures, the the, the parts of her body on her by by shaping the cake in that kind of uh, way, just like you can make a cake now to look like a gingerbread man or something like that. They made it looking like her. Right, the Queen Mother of Heaven, Asherah, right, and they, they Asherah, and uh, they made it look like her to offer it up unto her. But they would also eat the cake, which shows that they were ingesting and digesting her. In other words, they are taking in her doctrines, all the doctrines that's uh, connected with her. They're taking in the false worship to make themselves become one with her in their spirit, in their mind, in their heart. They were sold out to 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 her, to her worship, to her idolatry. Jeremiah 7 and verse 18. Jeremiah 7 and verse 18. It says, The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. Uh, and the names connected to the Queen of Heaven include Asherah, Asherah, Astarte, you know, same stuff coming on with uh, dealing with uh, uh, Easter that they tell you is about Christ's resurrection. Utter garbage. This is dealing with idol worship, idolatry, old Babylonian stuff, dealing with Tammuz and, and Nimrod and, and Samaramis and so on. And they trick you and lie to you in your church, tell you this is about Christ. Um, when Christ was walking around um, on the streets of Jerusalem, they were, I mean, others around him were actually going on with Easter, carrying on Easter, celebrating Easter, keeping their Easter feast, right? So if it was about Christ's death and burial and resurrection, how come they were doing it for so long before he actually came and died? Think about it. 
get into an aggressive research of the scriptures and of history, right? Because people are going to lead you astray. The Father will soon say to the Son, it is time to return and people need to know these things and not be deceived any longer. There is a group of people on this earth that controls the doctrines of the earth, that controls the teachings that go on in religious institutions, that control the religions of the earth. And and what you have to understand is that when the Father gave His commandments, He gave commandments. He did not give religions. He did not give um, denominations. He gave commandments to live by. He gave revelation to live by. He gave his instructions to live by. That's what Torah means. That's what, when they say law, it really means he gave instructions. Alright, so they, they made cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. You know, they'd pour down the, the drink offerings like pouring wine into, uh, onto the ground, right? Um, and, and that's significant there. Some other teaching will come out of that uh, another time. But uh, they pour drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger is what the Mosai says, right? And he goes on starting with verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger? Right? So he's angry at this kind of thing. It's idolatry to the extreme. When you're baking cakes to, 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 to participate in this kind of stuff, you're really into it. Um, you know, if you see someone baking or cooking, you know, and you get like a big get together, families coming over and all of that kind of, it's a big to do. These people were putting in a lot of effort and time to go and bake and cook and prepare foods. To have a feast unto these gods. They are fallen angels. They are spirit beings who are against the Most High. Who fell, got kicked out of heaven with their leader, Hasatan. Right? Who they have lied to you about. Telling you that his name is uh, is Lucifer. Not only did they hide the, the father's name. They hid Satan's name as well. All right, go check it out, look into it, see what you come up with, and begin to learn. Instead of just having faith sitting in a in, in a church and in the other religious institutions. Forty-four and verse nineteen. Jeremiah, that is, 44, verse 19. And when we burnt incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her? And pour out drink offerings unto her without our men, right? So they were heavily involved in doing all these things, uh, angering the Most High. The practice of giving and eating soul cakes still happens today. They're still carrying on, still doing this kind of stuff. You see all the festivities that happen around um, these, the times of these uh, these rituals that come every now and then, and we're talking certainly about Halloween in this case. But there are other festivities and feasts and holy days that go on throughout the year at different times for the purpose of worshiping Hasatan. All right, the festival of the dead. The Feast of Ancestors, the Feast of Sawin, or the Feast of Halloween, the Feast of All Saints Day or All Souls Day. These are all, among others, these are all religious pagan observances held by the Druids. In other words, the witches, the warlocks, the sorcerers. They, these, these are all pagan observances held by, this is interesting, by the Druids, the Christians, and also in Wicca. You see that? So here is Christianity being lumped into uh, this um, group with Druids, with Druidic worship and with the worship in that religion of uh, Wicca that deals with witches. And Christians don't seem to know about this, don't seem to care. And if you mention this to a pastor, they'll just tell you all kinds of scriptures. And basically, you know, they just put you down. Everybody's got to distance themselves from you because you're into false doctrine and so on. Yet the world seems to know all these kinds of stuff. But Christians have no clue. Makes you wonder, what are you being taught in church? Every Sunday morning, God loves you, God loves you. Well, pastor, answer this. How come we're celebrating um, uh, uh, a pagan holiday with druids, warlocks, 
and with people in Wicca. I might as well go get me an Ouija board then and come right here up in the service on a Sunday morning, right? Let them answer that. Ask them. And then get 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 ready to head for the door and get a new <laughs> spiritual life. Because if you keep asking those questions, you'll soon find out how much God loves everybody and how much that love is displayed through them to you. Because pretty soon, they're going to cut you off. Let's look at the name of God with a lowercase g, that is. So when is the name of a Celtic God? You can then conclude that Halloween, since the name was changed to Halloween, is the name of a Celtic god. You see that? So when people are celebrating Halloween, they are worshipping a Celtic god. That's fallen angel worship. This god's name has been changed to Halloween and is a spirit being worshipped heavily in October every year. Fallen angels are being worshipped under the name Halloween and this Worship is passed on to Satan. Let's look at some scriptures now as we get ready to to close out this entire lesson. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Then saith Christ unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Most High, and him only shalt thou serve. So you see Christ here is is rebuking Satan, telling him, Hey, get away from me with that kind of temptation. I'm not going to worship you. Only the Father in heaven should be worshipped. Right? So instead of worshipping these fallen angels and this Halloween Celtic God, who should we be worshipping? The Father in heaven. Luke chapter 4. And this one says, verse 8. Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Alright? So if you have ears to hear, you should hear the true word of of the Father in heaven, as he instructs you through his scriptures that he gave to us to learn the truth about these matters, about these pagan holidays that he says not to be involved with in any way whatsoever. All right? We mentioned Colossians chapter 2 in the last uh, lesson, but uh, we'll read that one again right here. Colossians 2 and verse 18, and it reads, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. All right? Don't let people trick you into worshipping angels. Revelation, book of Revelation, uh, chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. So he's about to worship an angel now. Right? Then said he unto me, meaning the angel said to him, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship the Most High. So the angel is stopping him from from doing this, from carrying out this worship, right? But here we find that people are encouraging you to worship angels through holidays. Now, if people just come and just tell you, "Hey, worship this fallen angel, worship Satan, worship Satan," you wouldn't probably fall for it. Oh, sure, some people would. But a lot of us probably wouldn't. So they do it in other ways, sneaky, crafty with it, right? They set up holidays and you think it's all about the festivities and a day off and you're hanging out and you get double time and a half or whatever, pay at work and so on. So they make it very enticing in order to get you to worship 
Satan. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 12 and verse 13 as well. Now we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. All right. So he's saying here, um, he's talking about after you heard the word of truth. All right. That that's what uh, helped you to become sealed. Right. Because it's the word of truth that you heard and you accepted it into your heart. And you're hearing the truth of the scriptures here about how the Father in Heaven feels about worshipping fallen angels, worshipping, um, you know, Satan through the Halloween observance and, and other holy days that's linked to it. He says, hey, this is the truth of it. Do not do this stuff. I have not commanded you to do this, but I've commanded you to not be involved in false worship, in satanic worship. All right? That is the truth of the matter. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells us, you know, what's the duty of man? Fear God and keep his commandments. And that's exactly how people should be living. Second Kings, chapter 17 and verse 16. And they left all the commandments of the Most High and made them molten images. So, the Israelites is talking about they left all the commandments and made them molten images, even two calves. So, they're getting into idol worship now. They left all the commandments. So, in order for them to have done these things, they had to leave the commandments, which means they are no longer following after the instructions of the Most High. When you stop following His instructions, you get into all kinds of demonic worship and, and fallen angel worship and so on. And made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven, fallen angels, right? And, and the sun, the stars, and so on. And served Baal. See that? Not following the instructions, it leads into all these things because you're going to give worship to somebody as long as you are living on this earth. If it's not the Most High, it's going to be you know who has a turn and all those that work with him. Second Kings chapter 21. Second Kings 21 and verse 3, and then we'll jump down to verse 6. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. People seem to be after the host of heaven a whole lot. The sun and the angels, fallen angels, and so on. And uh, let's go down to verse 6. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards, right? As those warlocks and witches, the Wicca that Christianity is siding with when they worship um, fallen angels through Halloween, right? The wizards, that means the Jews, the Celtic jewels that led them into this worship of, of uh, these spirit beings and, and so on through the ancient feast of Samhain, now called Halloween. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Most High to provoke him to anger. Every time people are doing these things, these pagan holidays that they observe, these rituals that just give worship to Satan, um, they provoke the Most High to anger. Remember, it is uh, uh, Satan who said he wanted to ascend his throne way up high, you know, above the stars of heaven and so on. And he he's worked heavily, strongly, and dedicatedly, I should say on uh, getting worship from from people on the earth and that's exactly what he is doing he's getting the worship by from people who don't understand the scriptures who don't keep the commandments of the father right but once you know 
right? You can loose yourself and free yourself from all of this now that you know, right? The culprit has been exposed. The lying um, tongue of the enemy has been exposed. And you've got to look at it like that and begin to, to see the, the, the truth in the word that came from the Father. Follow his instructions. Follow his Torah. Follow his law. Follow what he's saying in his words. All right? So, Belton and uh, uh, the feasts of Belton, Midsummer's Day and Halloween and so on, was used for 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 their needs, the ancient Celtics uh, needs to protect their livestock, their animals, right, and and so on, and their crops. But instead of uh, using these feasts to um, to get protection, they should have been praying to the Father in heaven. Right, so they ignored the Creator and went after other gods, after fallen angels, to get the protection that they needed. When 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 Christ uh, already showed us in um, what they call the Lord's Prayer, that it's a Father in heaven who should be the one that we turn to to look for our needs. And let's uh, let's just close with uh, with that uh, prayer, Matthew chapter six, and uh, we'll go from verse nine to thirteen. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. All right, so we've come to the end of our uh, teachings in this four-part series entitled Halloween Observance. Now we're armed with uh, a lot of knowledge um, concerning this. There's certainly a whole lot more that could have been mentioned. Um, you can do some more research if you are so interested, but you've seen um, from history where it came from and you've seen from Scripture the, the stance that the Father in Heaven takes um, regarding this Feast of Halloween. Um, many people, even Hollywood, make a big to-do of this. The, the media goes on with a craze because they like to cover stories and so on. This is all just the whole propagating of this thing so that it will be kept alive, right? But everything that is not of God or everything that is not of the Father in heaven is going to come to naught eventually. All right, make sure you are on the right side. That is the side of his Torah. Learn his Torah. Learn his law. Learn his instructions. Follow his commandments, right? And let your soul cleave unto the Father in heaven instead of cleaving unto satanic worship and fallen angel worship because by so doing, you are following after the way of Hasatan. It's a broad way, and many there be that find that kind of way. Which path are you going to take? Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Seek for the old path, and when you find it, get in it and walk in it. Stand in the way, find that way, walk in it. It's the good old way. It's a good old way. And by the way, uh, if you would like uh, more information on this or on other teachings, you can uh, contact yalak emmet at outlook.com. That's Y-A-L-A-K-E-M-E-T at outlook.com. Shalom.